Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're glad to have you along with us. Also happy to be joined this afternoon by the Mayor of London, Ed Holder, and the Medical Officer of Health at the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey. A welcome to the media who are in attendance this afternoon, and just a reminder that if you are submitting questions, you can do so very easily. Just click on the question mark in the text bubble here on Microsoft Teams. And if you can indicate your name as well as your media outlet and who your question is for. And finally, to those tuning in this afternoon, welcome. If you are listening on Global News Radio 980 CFPL, if you're watching on Rogers Television or the Rogers Facebook page or YouTube channel, or if you're joining us this afternoon on the CTV London website, we're glad to have you along with us. Let's get to the opening remarks and we'll start today with Mayor Ed Holder. Mayor Holder. Well, thanks, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. I um, intend to keep my comments relatively brief uh, today in part because we really and truly are firing on all cylinders now where COVID is concerned. Whether you look at the case counts, the hospitalization rates, the percentage positivity, vaccination uptake, things are going very well, exceptional well, I would say. This is no one or two day blip either. This is a steady trend and one that seemingly continues to improve by the day. We've never had access to more vaccine in London Middle Six than we do today. And I was encouraged to hear from Dr. Mackey that we set a new record yesterday with over 20,000 doses booked and rebooked. Absolutely incredible. I'd like to thank everyone involved from those responsible for building and maintaining our online vaccination portal to those who staff and operate our mass vaccination clinics. This is once in a lifetime historic work. We're seeing on a daily basis the impact that your efforts are having on our fight against the stubborn virus. Most of all, I'd like to acknowledge everyone in our region. You're doing the right things by signing up to get vaccinated at your earliest opportunity. And now it's a running race between vaccines and variants. Given our world-class infrastructure and now our ample supply of vaccine, it's also a race that we should be well positioned to win. We can't let up. We've need as many first doses and ultimately second doses administered as fast as we can. If you've already got your shot, thanks. Thanks for protecting yourself and our community. And please, even if you haven't been fully vaccinated, make sure to tell as many others as possible how easy it was, painless, and how relieved you are, and perhaps that's the most important, how relieved you are uh, knowing that you and your loved ones are protected. Dr. Mackey, uh, Warden uh, Burkhardt Jess and Dr. Duclo, myself, we can all say it a thousand times, but when someone hears it from a family member or a friend, that resonates and truly matters and means so much more. We're making significant progress. I think there's real reason for optimism. Now let's just stay focused to make sure we finish the job. Over to you, Dr. Mackey. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, completely aligned in terms of the uh, key messages for the day. We're almost there. Things are moving in the right direction. We absolutely need people to continue to get their first doses of vaccinations. We want to get that up to at least 90%. Uh, we're at uh, just over 72% as of Friday. And we all need to look at second dose options right now. Uh, with the Delta variant, we're seeing more and more need for second doses. It's very clear that you need two doses to be fully protected and just thrilled that 20,000 people yesterday in Middlesex and London were able to book their second doses online in one day. That's by far our record. You know, we'd, we'd breached 17,000 before, 20,000 is uh, yet another high water mark for rebookings. And there still are appointments in the next three to four weeks uh, for first doses and for second doses. So once again, anyone who had a vaccine before May 9th at honor before May 9th can rebook their second dose at covidvaccinelm.ca. Uh, we had uh, quite reasonable case counts yet again today and uh, no deaths. We only have one outbreak in the region. It's quite small and things continue to move in the right direction from the case and contact perspective uh, locally as well as provincially. Uh, happy to take questions, Dan. Yeah, so I'll turn back over to you. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Thank you, Mayor Holder. Well, we do have uh, a bunch of questions in the queue this afternoon, so let's get to those right away. Our first question this afternoon is from Andrew Graham. 
at Global News Radio 980 CFPL, and it's for you, Dr. Mackey. In light of today's announcement regarding Moderna shipments from the United States, do you have any updates on local vaccine shipments? Yeah, so this is great news. Even, even more Moderna coming in, which is wonderful. Moderna is an mRNA vaccine, just like Pfizer. They are essentially, you know, the same from a vaccination perspective. Top-notch vaccines, really, really fantastic news. It takes time for those international announcements to make it through the national allocation process to the provinces and then the provincial allocation process to the health units. So we don't have the information yet. We do have a hospital public health unit ministry call this evening with uh, the deputy ministers at Homer team, who's the new head of the vaccine task force, as well as a number of ministers. And uh, those are three times a week at this point, and hopefully we'll get more information this evening on that. Thanks, Dr. Mackey. We do have a couple of other quick follow-ups from Andrew Graham. Uh, Dr. Mackey, the province announced plans today to accelerate second doses. What impact will this have locally? Yeah, the, the move to accelerate second doses is fantastic. We are in the process of uh, booking those folks that have uh, had their first dose up to May 9th. So, you know, 20,000 a banner day yesterday. We know there are thousands more who will book over the next few days. And then we'll look over the weekend about whether we can open up any further than that with an announcement on Monday. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. And uh, back to Andrew Graham. Uh, Dr. Mackey, the Waterloo region is grappling with a surge in cases linked to the Delta variant. Does this pose any concern for London and Middlesex County? Yeah, the Waterloo situation is quite interesting and, and very unfortunate. It is a risk for the region. The numbers aren't tremendous, but they are certainly at a higher rate than most other places in Ontario right now and not on the same sharp downward trend that we're seeing in most places. The interesting thing is that Waterloo didn't have as high a third wave peak. So, you know, th this is one of those situations where the community wasn't hit as hard in that last wave. And so, you know, whether it is because there isn't as much naturally acquired immunity or there might be some complacency, you are seeing additional spread there where you aren't in other pr places. But really, if you look across the province, Waterloo is the only significant jurisdiction where you're not seeing the real downward trend that the rest of the province is seeing. And it is a threat, something we're watching very closely. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mackey. We do have a few other questions from Andrew Graham, but I, I'd, I'd like to come back to those if we could and move to a question from Jennifer Beeman. Uh, Jennifer Beeman at the London Free Press, Dr. Mackey asks, are you expecting a long drawn out plateau in local case counts? What is the primary driver of spread right now? Is it travel, close contact with confirmed cases, outbreaks, or something else? Yeah, it's uh, again, the, the boring story of close contact with confirmed cases remains the driver. Most of the cases that we're diagnosing now, as in the last few weeks, are related to close contact with confirmed cases and particularly close indoor contact. I wanna be clear that indoor environments really are where we're seeing the spread. If you can take it outdoors, it makes it literally 20 times as uh, 20, 20, 20 times safer. That essentially being outdoors is as equivalent as uh, getting a vaccine in terms of reducing your uh, likelihood of acquiring COVID. And so if you're doing both of those things, getting vaccinated and getting outdoors, you are really putting yourself in a good situation. Thank you very much, Dr. Mackey. And a follow-up from Jennifer Beeman. And this relates to uh, the news release that went out a little bit earlier this afternoon. Uh, Dr. Mackey, how many schools will be part of the pop-up clinic rollout that's starting on the 21st of June? Yeah, so we have 10 schools uh, scheduled over that two week period after June 21st. And we certainly will watch closely what happens in those clinics. We're planning to have that mobile team in the field all summer. They, they will stay longer, add staff and or add additional appointments if we really see a lot of demand at those schools. Uh, we're really happy that we've been able to fully staff that mobile team. It's a strong experienced team. And they're also, you know, we're, we're looking to add additional mobile teams as well. So potentially additional sites coming on uh, over the next few weeks as well. 
Thank you very much. We're going to go back to a couple of questions from Andrew Graham, Dr. Mackey, uh, and this one is for you as well. Uh, Andrew asks, Dr. Mackey, it's been nearly a week since patios were allowed to reopen. How has compliance been from patios and other businesses that were recently allowed to reopen? Yeah, we've seen pretty good compliance, uh, not a lot of complaints. Uh, I know the city has been watching that closely as well. You know, it's it's mostly a situation where some minor reminders are more than enough if there are any issues whatsoever. The, the restaurant community knows the stakes. They want to be opening, so they're doing their best to operate as, as safely as possible. Mayor Holder, did you have an additional comment there? Yes, I just to uh, remind media that when we discussed this on Monday, one of the things I was pleased to say is that notwithstanding our bylaw enforcement uh, uh, rigorous uh, review of restaurants and particularly patios and all, there was ultimately one charge laid and that was from a, a frequent offender. Uh, everyone else got it. And if to the extent that there was some education uh, uh, and uh, gentle reminders required, but to Dr. Mackey's point, uh, businesses know what it's, what's at stake here and they don't want to mess this up. And so they've been incredibly scrupulous. Thank you very much, Mayor Holder. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Let's go to uh, another question here from Andrew Graham. Uh, Dr. Mackey, Premier Doug Ford said today that he's pushing to launch step two of the reopening plan before the 2nd of July. From a regional perspective, would that work in London and Middlesex County? I think it's difficult to say for sure what would happen if we move beyond step one before the 2nd of July. Uh, the numbers here are relatively small compared to the provincial numbers, which are much more stable. And so, you know, we had a big bounce yesterday to over 20 cases, which is more than we've seen for several days. Does that mean it's a new trend? Likely not, probably just some day-to-day -day variation. But, you know, I can say with confidence that we don't know for sure what would happen if we move uh, to step two before the 2nd of July. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Let's go to our next question. This one comes from Steve Young at CTV London and News Talk 1290. CJBK. Dr. Mackey, Health Canada has revised its advice on how long you should wait before getting the second dose of vaccine. Do you feel this erodes confidence in the system with the backtracking that has taken place? Has it created confusion? Yeah, really appreciate the question, Steve. It's a chronic problem we have with trying to explain science to the general public because science does change. You know, people get criticized for changing opinions. The reality is that if new data comes to light, opinions should change. And in this situation, uh, the, the emergence of the Delta variant, we were all worried about some variant that the vaccine wouldn't protect against. Thank goodness we're not in that situation. But we are in this strange situation where one of the variants, which is actually, you know, the Delta variant will be the number one variant in Ontario, over the next few weeks and that variant requires two doses. Six months ago we thought that one dose was protective. The research trials were showing that from all of the COVID circulating around the world. One dose was very protective and so we spread out the second doses. Now we have a variant where you really need that second dose and so of course the advice is going to change. Does it potentially impact uh, confidence? It certainly may but it, it should not. This is, this is an example of advice changing when information changes and the, and the picture evolves. And that's exactly what our system should be doing and what our leaders should be doing in response. Thank you very much, Dr. Mackey. Let's go to our next question. This one comes to us from Craig Needles at Blackburn News. Uh, is Dr. Mackey able to provide a list of schools that will have vaccine clinics? And if a school community is not on the current list and wants a clinic, are they able to ask for the health unit to hold one? Yeah, thanks for the question, Craig. So um, I'll answer the first part first. The list of schools absolutely will be provided. What we're doing is we're providing it first to the families in those schools. And that's really because the clinics are targeted at those populations where we know the COVID rates have been high and or the vaccination rates have been low. These are, you know, I, I get that people want vaccines closer to home. Right now, 
the prioritization around these schools is, is very much data driven. It's about high case counts or low vaccine uptake uh, in those communities. We know that getting vaccine into those communities where uptake has been low will make a difference. And there's a pretty, um, it's not a perfect correlation, but there is a fairly strong correlation between communities that have low vaccination rates and high COVID uh, uptake over the whole duration of the pandemic. And that's because those communities have various risk factors, whether it's a lot of people who can't work from home or you know, some unstable socioeconomic issues that make, make it more difficult to get into vaccination clinics or not as much vehicle access so that it's harder to, to drive to appointments. So that's where we're focusing on the schools at this point and at, and again we want to get the message out to those school communities we will open those clinics to all of the community across Middlesex and London and of course you know anyone could really come from across the province we've had lots of people come here for vaccine and vice versa but that will happen a couple of days after we've let those target communities know that uh, they can get their their shots lined up around schools requesting a clinic you know, we don't have a process for that at this point. The the mobile capacity, as you can imagine, there are hundreds and hundreds of places where we would want to bring that capacity. And so we really have to have criteria. The readiness and and uh, and desire and acceptability it, with the community and in the school leadership in particular is a really important factor that we consider. We, we were in contact with the school boards uh, to make sure that the logistics would work at these specific school sites. There are lots of schools where the layout just is not conducive to the sort of clinic where we want to run hundreds of people through. And but you know when we can, we will get out there for sure. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Next question is from Jennifer Beeman at the Free Press. And just before we get to Jennifer's question, a reminder: if you are a member of the media and you've been holding back your questions. Uh, we are getting down towards the end of the queue today, so now would be a good time to put those additional questions in so that we can get you some answers. Jennifer Beeman at the Free Press, Dr. Mackey has another question and here's what it is. What percentage of people 12 plus in London Middlesex have received at least one dose? How about for two doses? Dr. Mackey, you're just on mute there. Of course I am. Thanks, Dan. Uh, so I'm going to screen share. This data is pulled directly from our website and uh, we've got the percent of vaccine uptake across the uh, age categories from 80 plus where we're almost at 90 percent down to 12 to 17 year olds where we're almost at 40 percent. This data to be clear is actually from last Friday. So all of these numbers are probably in the range of 5 percent, you know, 4 or 5 percent higher than they were, we're vaccinating about 5% of this population each week. If you look at the top, you've got these totals. On the right hand, 72% of 18 you know, people 18 years and older had received their first dose. Almost 9% received second doses. And on the left, this adds in the 12 plus group. So everyone 12 to, you know, to uh, through the age categories, that rate is almost a 70% and eight and a bit percent. I received their second doses. Um, if you look at these numbers across the province, the provincial averages are roughly 5% uh, higher, a little bit more than that in the 12 to 17 year old. And that's just because of the vaccine el eligibility. We know the hotspots, the large GTA communities in particular have been driving those numbers up, which is fantastic. And we hope to uh, catch up at some point. We are uh, we're behind a bit more in the 12 to 17 year olds because um, of the hotspot strategy that was in place just as those the, the eligibility was opening up there to 12 to 17 year olds and we're behind on the two doses as well. But again, we're, we're doing our best to catch up um, with the doses we have and we'll see all of these numbers uh, climbing significantly over the next few weeks. Thank you very much. Let's go to our next question. It comes to us from Jane Sims at the London Free Press. Dr. Mackey, given the Delta variant spread in Waterloo, would you recommend people avoid traveling to that area until the situation is under control? Yeah, we're not really in a situation of travel advisories. Jane, I appreciate the question, but we're still talking about, you know, 20 to 40 cases a day. It's really not out of the realm of what we're seeing in this community. 
and uh, we know that those travel advisories uh, have significant detrimental effects on the economy and on families. Uh, but to be clear, we we are discouraging any unnecessary indoor close contact. You know, keeping it outdoors, keeping it distanced, wearing the masks, and of course getting vaccinated will reduce risk. Uh, if you have an unnecessary trip planned where you're going to be in close contact with any anyone in Waterloo or anywhere else, we really would discourage that. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Let's go to the next question. And this one is coming to us again from Jennifer Beeman. Uh, Dr. Mackey, is there a mechanism for people who receive vaccines outside of Ontario or Canada to report their status to the health unit? Yes, there is. Uh, thanks for the question. We're at this point, people should uh, email covid.vaccination at, at mlhu.on.ca and uh, the, the team will connect with a someone from the the team, the, the nursing team or, or COVAX access team that can enter that data. Uh, the province put that in place, I believe, last week, so we can do that now. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. And, and things have been moving very, very quickly, as we know, throughout this whole process. And we do have some information now on the Health Unit website about that uh, as well. And uh, I'll just I'll drop that link in the um, in the question uh, group here for the media so that they can see that. And uh, and yes, you can visit the Health Unit's website for that information. All right, let's go. I think that brings us to the end of our questions. It does. So, uh, Dr. Mackey. Mayor Holder, thank you again, uh, as always, for your time, for your information, and for sharing it with the community as, as we do on the virtual media briefings. It is very much appreciated. We also want to thank you uh, for joining us uh, to the media for your questions and for always being there and for, uh, for sharing those questions that are on the minds of your listeners and your readers. Uh, it's very important for us to hear them and to have that opportunity to share those important messages and up-to-date information as well. Finally, to those who've tuned in, uh, we thank you as always for joining us as well. That does do it for today. We will be back next Monday with our next virtual media briefing at two o'clock. Between now and then, have a great rest of your Thursday afternoon. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you on Monday. So long for now.